and we'll just let it for a second. Just see the tip of it. Well, hello, it's only Steve. Doing the tipping. So what do you think? So you, I am a bizarre Grinch of Soap's Christmas. Yeah. What did you call me? I loved it. Like a little bit of Oompa Loompa, Renegade Grinch meets Oompa Loompa. I'm a Renegade Grinch that meets Oompa, Oompa Loompas. Loompas. Yeah. Look at that. Yeah. I did my hair. Oompa Steve Loompa. got this for me. Isn't it crazy? It's a great look. It's a great look, isn't it? Yeah. So I'm not, I don't have my glasses on, so I can't see what it says. <laughs> Sharon's watching, and Steve thinks you're the meth Grinch. The meth Grinch? The meth Grinch. I'd be thinner. <laughs> mm -hmm. If I was the meth Grinch, I would not have the stomach. You'd just still be moving very quickly. I'd still be moving really quickly. Yeah, you wouldn't Anyways, need to so as you see, we have Jason here tonight. Yay! Hey, folks. Jasmine worked this morning because Jason needed the morning off, so Jason's my guest tonight. Yay, and we're gonna be talking about vinyl, Christmas vinyl. Crazy, but I had to do this. Steve got this, got this mohawk wave for me, and I all I thought about was crazy demented Grinch. Yep, yep, you know. Holiday. And then I saw these at the last moment and I had to put them on. Isn't that hilarious? I love it. Anyways, so now it's gonna start coming off because it's hot. <laughs> so Jason's gonna tell you a little bit about some of the music. And then I'll log right into it as well. So tonight we are talking about vintage Christmas Ooh. vinyl. Maybe I need to leave it on. Albums, and we're going to talk a little bit about, you know, Christmas music, some of the songs, stuff that's been going on for the last, you know, several hundred years in this country. Yes. So, uh, so you got some cool tips. Got some cool notes. A little bit of research this week. Maybe I can put this um, on with my glasses on. There I can. Yeah, there you go. There you go. So, so what do you got for us? Well, the majority of uh, Christmas music obviously was religious. You're talking around the 4th century uh, when uh, the Romans would bring some stuff in. Once the Christians kind of got into the situation, they took a lot of the pagan songs and turned those into their own religious music, which is where we get some of that stuff in the celebration part of it. Uh, it wasn't until like the 1930s here in this country with, I think you guys talked about the ornaments. The 1930s, yes, we did talk about ornaments. Where With Jasmine, you better be watching. <laughs> Uh, a lot of the things that we think of as Christmas traditions nowadays got their start in this country around the Great Depression. Yep. A large part of it dealing to do with uh, some of the immigrant families coming into the country and some of the celebrations they had for the holidays. Uh, in the 1930s, you're also going to get with the Great Depression a bit more American influence in some of the stuff that's coming out that is uh, a little less religious and more secular. Uh, and they started kind of pushing some of the music, writing songs towards kids. That's when you're going to start seeing things like Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer, uh, Santa Claus is Coming to Town, a number of those types of music. I have them. them! Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Some of the classics that you may remember. Oh, here we go. About when they talk Snoopy. About yeah. Like Snoopy. Snoopy's Christmas. Yep. So these are all available here. You guys got to come get them because how many times, do these remind you of when you were younger? Oh, very much so. We used to I run mean, around on the Christmas tree dancing to Snoopy and the Red Baron. It Fun was times. Exciting. What yeah. else you got? Uh, well, World War II in, in particular became a big part of uh, more inward looking songs, songs that had a bit more relevancy about what was going on, like missing somebody and wanting to get home for Christmas. Uh, makes a, a lot more sense when you think about the fact that a lot of these guys were overseas battling, fighting people at home, missing them, wanting them to come back. Idealized versions of what you could expect from the home American Christmas, uh, as far as that goes. So you said it came from what time frame? Did 1930s, well, the original stuff is you're talking about the 4th century. The 4th um, century, but it was religious-based, you religious say? Religious-based. They didn't yeah. get it, and once it, and it, it traveled that way through Europe. Um, like I said, it didn't really come 
until I got to these shores in the 1930s with a lot of the immigrant customs that came over. The, the music also had a relevance to it as well. We started actually bringing this stuff into more and more of our own Christmas traditions. There was probably a lot of classical back then. A lot of classical, a lot of compositions. The new stuff, like I said, started to come out in the 1940s. Uh, Gene Autry's Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer, it's a 1942, uh, or 49, excuse me. 1949. 1949 album. Um, some of those types of songs. Let's see, what did I do? The, uh, the first pop artist of all new recordings for Christmas music was a fellow by the name of Fred Waring and his Pennsylvanians. Uh, their 1942 album, Twas the Night Before Christmas. I wonder if they were from Pennsylvania. I'm guessing that's part of the key of how they get people in. You know. <laughs> so crazy! It wasn't Pat Boone. Wasn't Pat Boone. It wasn't although, Pat Boone. Although once you get past the 1940s into the 50s, where some of the more novelty songs were coming out, uh, as well as people sort of doing experiments with things, really kind of doing uh, the 12-inch, like the single became like kind of what was pushing things. Then you started getting into like the heavier wings, where you've got popular artists, artists that they're marketing towards teenagers, which were a new demographic in the 50s putting out this stuff, trying to get this music going. Like um, him. Like Pat Boone. Because Pat Boone was a heartthrob in the 50s. Yes, yes. So him putting out a uh, uh, Christmas album seems yeah. like a no-brainer. Yeah, and you had a number of the big recording companies, Columbia being one of them, several others, who used to, every year, tag one of their artists to do a track for a compilation album that they were putting out. The compilation albums themselves became one of the more popular ways in the 60s and 70s, some of the biggest selling and some of the most important records were ones that were being put out not necessarily by a music company or a, say a, uh, a musical instrument company or even anybody that really necessarily had stuff to do with Christmas. It was things like banks, things like Firestone. Like Firestone. True Firestone Tires. Hardware. Yes, we do have a True Value We're hardware. listening to the True Value Hardware uh, had a compilation as well. Those are some of the most sought after simply because they would do a different lineup every single year. You could get volume after volume of them. Three volumes here. Right. And they would hire actual famous people to come in and sing these songs. So they're only available on these, yes. right? Yes. Yeah, you can't get them as far as anybody else doing them. They had the rights to them. They were sold directly to the public from wherever they were. Your Firestone. gas station, your tire station, mm -hmm. the... the uh, Five and Dime, what were the ones? Grants. Grants, which was a five and dime, they were sort of a direct competitor with Woolworths, uh, ended up kind of spinning out and going out of business because they couldn't compete with them. Uh, but they had some of the most sought after of the Christmas Grants compilations. Did. Grants did. I don't have any. We, I've never seen one. If you can see mm -hmm. it, you know, go check it out because you know you've got some money involved in that. Uh, the oldest popular Christmas music that I was able to figure out or research, we believe. It's 1889. It's an Edison wax cylinder. A song called The Banjo Jingle by I William Lomas. It's basically a jingle bell type riff, but done by a guy with a banjo. Sadly, there are no copies believed to survive of that. If you happen to find a wax cylinder of the banjo jingle, you'll know you've got something in store there as well. So you can have deliverance with Christmas. <laughs> so um, this is a wax cylinder but it would be a Christmas one. These are the Edison wax cylinders. This one's broken, but that's okay. I just want to show you. It's wax. It's a round wax ball, right? So you say, what's it called? It's called the banjo, banjo jingle. Banjo jingle in a wax cylinder. So um, these were the very first music. Did you know yeah. that? Yep. Or yep. recorded music. Recorded music as far as that goes. Yeah. Um, so you know what? I have to show you. Yeah. The Firestone Orchestra. Yeah. So not only did these companies put out um, Cool, one of a kind, meaning not one of a kind, but um, where you can only get it here. Yeah. But Firestone, the tire company, had its own orchestra that. Yeah. And the orchestra, isn't that hilarious? The fight with the Firestone the orchestra. orchestra. Yeah, and sought after heavily a lot of these folks uh, just because they were able to have that staying power at Christmas time, have the selling power. People knew what was going on and they were out looking for those when they go to those famous places. I wonder if Firestone still has an orchestra. That's a good question you'd have to ask them. I don't know. Crazy. Yeah. So, real quick, let me tell you some of the things that, um, and then you have more, right? I do have some more. We'll talk in a second yeah. about those. But, um, I forgot what record this came <laughs> Okay, I know what it looks it's like. One of the kids' ones, I think. So, um, we do have sealed records. 
So he was talking about children's records, and Cabbage Patch put out a Christmas one. And if you watched a couple of years ago, I did the KFC one, because KFC put out one, just yeah. like the Firestone did, which is crazy. What are you listening for Christmas? Oh, Kentucky Fried, Fried Chicken. Chicken. Did a great one. Um, but probably huge in Japan, because that's what they eat for Christmas. Can it's Kentucky Fried Chicken. Christmas dinner? I yep. Can, I can um, get that. It's, a, it's considered Christmas dinner there. Yeah. Um, somebody's asking something. Jenny Lou, what's happening here? Oh, this? <laughs> I'm a crazy. What did you call me? Uh, we're the we're the Grinch uh, cross with an Oompa Loompa. An Oompa Loompa Grinch who's on his way to a punk show. And somewhere. Steve tells me that I'm a Grinch on meth, but I would be thinner. Um. So, anyways, those are fun. But this fabulous thing just fell out of a record, which I have to find. And look at this. Look at the graphics on this. Look at this. This came. It has. The lyrics for the album, this is frameable in and of itself. Yeah. It'd be a great Christmas decoration, Oop, because we flipped it around. Yeah. A great, a great decor decoration to have. Decoration to have, yeah. what's in my mind. And um, this would be going with, I know what the record looks like, I promise. It's here, here it is. This goes oh, yeah. with this album. So look at the graphics on this album, everybody. Look at this. It's old school, oops, old school Santa. I flipped it, so I'm doing I don't know where I'm at. It's because I'm an Oompa Loompa. So, um, that is an iconic image that you could actually frame and just put on the wall. Fantastic, and you can collect them all in the back. You can have the whole line. Or set them. Fun, right? Yeah. But, um, there's a whole bunch, you guys. You have to come in. Now, let me tell you how silly I am. Because I thought the guy <laughs> right. for the music. Back. I didn't realize Jackie Gleason actually sang, and I don't know if he actually does. But what is a Dickerson? What are you talking about, a Dickerson? Oh, what were we talking about? I don't know. Anyway, so um, Jackie Gleason. This is the male Jackie Gleason that with the model on the front. So um, everybody put out a Christmas album back in the day. I'm gonna take these off because I am hot. Oops, and they're hanging. Too much hairspray. Got the wardrobe malfunction. So, um, everybody back in the day did one. Mm -hmm. Everybody back in the day did a um, a Christmas album because I know Leonard Nimoy did. Yep. Leonard Nimoy did. I don't have all of these to show you, which is sad because I should have them all. Yep. But um, and uh, Captain Kirk did as well. Yep. yep. Pat Boone, okay. because. Pat Boone may have been a heartthrob back then, but today he's not anybody knows who he is. Pat Boone's daughter is Debbie Boone, and Debbie Boone saying, you light up my life. For those of you who are in your 50s and 40s who actually can remember the time. Can remember the time. Yeah. I had the benefit of meeting him and his daughter, and she is fantastic. He is like you'd expect. Um, but then I want to show you, because here we have Drummer Boy, right? Little Drummer Boy. But do you think that only one person did Little, little Drummer? Oh, you guys are all chatting about other things. <laughs> so, um, the reason I showed you that is because the Little, yeah. the little, little Drummer Boy, there's another one too, somewhere. The Little Drummer Boy, the Little, the little Drummer Boy, Several different artists put these, uh, put these out. We carry them, they're fantastic. All of our records are 30% off all the time. And I do know quite a bit about albums because I did run a record store for years. So did you, actually. Did, no, well, we did you so in the music part? Yeah. I was never in charge of the music department, but I was in charge of the guys who were in charge of the yeah. music department. Um, so, like this, Mistletoe, Little Drummer Boy. Yeah. How cool, and these records are beautiful. So you'll have to come in and take a look. Yeah. What do you have there? Oh, this is just a special that RCA put out. It's uh, mm -hmm. just music to trim your tree by. Music to trim your tree and by. And it's pretty much a, a, a medley of classics. You're going to have Vic Damon on there, Arthur Fielder and the Boston Pops Orchestra. Uh, Chet Atkins does a lot on this as well. Mm -hmm. So the kind of thing that, you know, again, like we were saying, the record companies would get together, get some of their best artists, come up with an idea, you know, put some songs together, and then merchandise the thing. So... A lot of people that are um, my age, um, mine and Jason's age, a little bit older, a little bit younger, know about the 80s Christmas music. Yeah. And I would show you our 80s Christmas music if I had any, because every time I get it, it goes flying out. 
Um, yes, the little drummer. Joan Jett's little drummer boy is the best. Are you kidding? Yeah. Absolutely. And I wish I had it to show you. Yeah. But a very special Christmas. Um, you know, the... the what is John? The, the Crosby. Yeah. yeah. Um, yeah. Those are all yeah. extremely Band popular. Stuff. The Band-Aid, Band-Aid, matter of fact, is on your list. Yes. Of, um, the, some of the most sought the, after. The top, well, the top, the top, top. ten selling... What are you at the top ten selling? Well, they're the top ten selling uh, Christmas albums of all time, uh, based on research. 1942's White Christmas from Bing Crosby sold mm -hmm. $50 million. Uh, his 1933 Silent Night, $30 million. Oh. 1994, Mariah Carey shows up uh, with All I Want for Christmas. She's at $16 million Is that to date? since then. From what I can tell, you, it's so today. far, yeah, I could be wrong. I'm not gonna. Well, I mean, you get what you rough mean. estimates, yeah. but I mean, some of this stuff. I mean, she's one of the only really modern ones on there. Uh, Rudolph the Red Nosed Reindeer by Gene Autry is 1949, and that was 12 million. You get to 84 with uh, Last Christmas from Wham, as well as the Band Aid song. You're looking at like 12, 11 million dollars a piece on those. Last Christmas is one of the most beautiful songs in the world. Yeah, it's one of the most heavily covered. I think yeah. we've all heard every cover there yeah, is. Yeah, so does a good one. Yeah, uh, 1958 Chipmunks at the bottom of the list. Five million dollars. Christmas don't be late for the Chipmunks. Yeah, all the time. Um, so that's actually good to know because mm -hmm. those are the top selling ones and. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm sad because I do like Mariah Carey's song, but I don't know if one song makes you in the top. You should That's have a, maybe an album. Yeah. But um, I do like the song. Yeah. So I looked up to see what the most valuable mm -hmm. Christmas album Collecting are. wise. Collecting wise. Like yeah. what? what's the holy grail that you're going to run after? Like the holy grail of standard vinyl would be the baby album. Right. From the Beatles. It's actually called something else. But a lot of people refer to it as the dead baby album. Yep. Um, which is one of the most sought after albums in the world because it was only out for like five hours. Yes. So unless you peel a cover off, yeah, you don't know. You don't know. So um, some of these were quite interesting to me because um, Elvis Presley and the Beatles and the Beatles individually yeah. um, were in the top ones. But the number one most expensive was Elvis's Christmas album, the one 1957 Red Vinyl. Night Butcher Baby. Thank you, Steve. Butcher Baby. Beatles Butcher Baby. Right. Um, so Elvis Presley happens to have the most expensive um, Christmas album there is, and that is um, 1957 on RCA, the red vinyl, and it's right now several different sites are stating that it's about around 18 grand. I don't know if that's just true, a, but just a small amount. Just a small amount. Yeah, but next in line is also Elvis yes. with the next one. Yep. And that's Blue Christmas. Now, yeah. the Blue Christmas at Elvis is the white label promo. Yeah. Because if you deal in albums, you know. Yes, last I know, Billy. We just we talked about that. Last Christmas is one of the most beautiful albums in the world, songs in the world. And actually, there's another one that's becoming quite popular. Um, that is by Erasure. Okay. And um, as my mind goes, I'll remember it. Okay, so um, so Blue Hawaii is around three thousand. Blue Christmas is around three thousand. Then John Lennon, the Beatles, the Beatles, the Christmas album, the Apple LP, yep. around five hundred. Yep. Um, it seems that the um, John Lennon's Happy Christmas, which I've never seen, this is a forty-five. It's a forty-five. Now, all you little ones, a forty-five is just a smaller album that requires a, a bigger speed. inside. Um, and then George Harrison's Ding Dong, Ding Dong. You know George Harrison stars in one of the, my favorite movies called The Caveman. Nope. And did you know that? I thought that was Ringo. Oh, sorry, that is yeah. Ringo. Yeah. Yeah. Ringo Starr. Yeah. But we watched we watched a preview of that last night. And did you know that that's full of stars that yes. I didn't even know? Shelley yes. Long is in that. Yeah. I didn't even know that. I remember watching it in grade school. I was little. I just got a kick out of the fact that they fried an egg on, yes. a, on a steam vent. Yeah. And then went down and played in it. Yes. <laughs> down that. Remember the cock cock. Down that cool slide. Yes. Anyways, so um, and then there's Jingle Bell Rock, which is Billy Bobby Helms. Yep. Um, 225. That's the Decca 45. 45 again. Yep. I mean, some of these albums that are the most expensive are the small ones. Yes. Which yep. is crazy. Then you have um, Smokey Robinson and the Miracles, which is Christmas and the Miracles. Um, Christmas with the Miracles, and then Silent Night. The little drummer boy, Jimi Hendrix. Jimi Hendrix. Have you heard it? Yeah. yeah. Have I heard it? I may have. I may have. 
They're discussing other things in my show. That's okay. <laughs> I don't care. Discuss away. Let's talk about it. So, um, and then we have um, the Rocket, the Ronettes, yep. Crystals and the Ronettes, and then Bobby's Oh Come All He Faithful. It's the top one. Now, you know what I'm surprised that's not on your list? Yeah. Grandma got ran over by a reindeer. <laughs> Grandma got ran over by a reindeer because that is... No, don't be sorry, but ba... Don't be sorry. Talk away. That's like the... Uh, that's I'm like just the, making fun. That's all. It's like the tail end of the vintage for me. As far what as is? that goes. Grandma got run over by a reindeer. I remember it coming out. It's obviously vintage now. Well, obviously, but, but it's uh, a fun one. Yeah, yeah. The novelty song is mm -hmm. really kind of like that's, and that's I think that's one of the things I was uh, excited to realize was that the novelty stuff really started to push through after the '80s uh, because of the fact that the majority of Christmas music, if you think about it, it's rare that you get a bevy of like new Christmas music. Okay, Run DMC's Christmas in the Hollers. Oh yeah, yeah. Yes, yeah. that is a good one and actually I think we have it. And I think a large part of that, uh, a lot of those a lot of those tracks are off of that very special Christmas. It is off this the very, very first special. one, which yeah. again, you're getting back to like a company going in, picking and getting artists mm -hmm. put together and using a project. At that point I think it's like a, that's like the super idea of what like Firestone was doing. Right. You know what I mean? Or, mm -hmm. or RCA and that type of thing. And if you think about it, the um they were doing it along the same lines with the very special Christmas because they were using yeah. Keith Heron's work yeah. as cover yeah. art. They were pulling in more local artists, yeah. more um yeah. relevant artists like yeah. Keith Herring and um right. what's his name? The cookie jar guy. Um I can never the pictures. <sighs> Who's in my head right now? Um, the, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. How around New York? His name totally escapes me. Uh, Warhol. Yes, Warhol. Okay. So Warhol covers, see, look at that. Um, I'm losing my mind. You see that boss, yeah. Like my, the color, yeah, that's the color Warhol. Yeah. So they started bringing in more, um, more local artists yeah. for them. And, well, I say local because that was probably done in New York where Keith Haring was. Yeah. But um, it was big for for them to do that back then. It's bringing yeah. artist covers because yeah. Keith Haring had it. I mean, he's well, like, and that's and that's I think that's one of the things too we were talking about was you'll notice that uh, a cover this season may be the real popular song. Yeah, but it's still a cover of a song that you know because it, it was a Christmas song that existed beforehand. The popular Christmas music, it's difficult to get new ones in there in the popular consciousness because Christmas is all about nostalgia. It's all yes, about it wanting to remember that music you were listening to as a kid. Right. Any of that stuff that made you feel good inside. That's exactly, it's, it, yes. It's a version of that, maybe with a new artist, maybe the new way of doing it. Um, but that's, again, that's I find that very interesting that you've got something that's not really going to have a lot of shake it and break it type stuff and brand new uh, intellectual properties just simply because people don't necessarily want that. They want what they came up with, what they grew up with, what makes them feel good and they remember. That's what it's all about. Yeah. Okay, so when we're talking nostalgia and we're talking Christmas albums and yeah. stuff like that, Vintage. we gave you some, some cool tips and ideas of, of how it started yeah. and, and all the statistics. Yeah. But really when you're buying Christmas music, it's about what memory it sparks. Yep. And nine, what I hear owning a vintage store, and I'm sure you hear it too, working here for as long as you have, mm -hmm. um, he's been here forever. And we are very thankful. So um, sometimes just walking in and seeing the cover will spark the memory. Yeah. You may not yeah. even know what the album says, but this cover right here was every Christmas of your, of your single digit years. Right. And that's what's going to sell your record. So yeah. when you come in and look, don't worry about, I mean, the album will play. Yeah. And it's great because we don't sell a crappy album, you know, bad um, conditions. We try to check albums. our vinyl before it hits the yeah. floor. Yeah. And um, even if you never play it, yeah. you put it out as a Christmas decoration. Yeah, yeah very much so. We had to, we, All the Christmas mm -hmm. albums used to come out when I was a kid. We'd yeah. set them up around the music area and the stereo. So that was another corner of the house that was decorated. Yeah style. And I got to tell you, especially if you have a small house, mm -hmm. um, if you're in an apartment in Manhattan or California and you don't have a lot of space, you don't have a lot of money, talk to your parents, talk to somebody, go to the, your local vintage store, go to your local thrift store, buy some Christmas albums, there's your decoration. Yeah. yeah. You know, do a little ceramic tree yeah. or and something. And the bonus of collecting with Christmas as well is that a large number of this stuff, since it only gets played once a year, it's going to be in better shape than the albums, you know, the pop music albums that you're picking up. Yeah. Not to mention the fact that mm -hmm. because it's not in real high demand, you're going to find really good prices on, you most, are. on most of your vintage Christmas You albums. are. And and I'm telling you, like $9, $8, $6, yeah. and they're 30% off. So right. Christmas albums, unless they're on that list, yeah. um, should not be outrageously priced. Right. So 
Easy storage, put them in your record collection. Yep. Because if you're going to buy records and put them out, you most likely listen to them. Yep. Um, and then they don't take up a bunch of space. So, yep. you know, it's cool. It's a cool decorating tip as well. And sometimes when you come in, and one of the things that I want to get, I, I try to get through to people is sometimes just spending time with your parents yeah. through a vintage store. Yep. Will, will go miles beyond what a gift that you buy at the store is. Yeah. You know, coming in and listening to them as they talk about remembering this when they were a kid at right. Christmas, and they're sharing that on to their kids. Right. So, you know, come in, spend some time, walk around with your parents, walk around with your, your aunts and uncles, your whoever it is, yeah. and listen to their stories, because that is a gift that you are gonna wish you had. Yeah. Yeah. as well as being able to talk about the music or understand yeah. what was going on with them or the time period, how they grew up, you know, what, what uh, memories they might have, and how it mm -hmm. shapes everything from there on out. And you might be surprised because if your parents liked it, there's a good chance you might like it. Yeah. And, or something similar to it. So. Yeah. yeah. Well, we all change yes. as we grow older. Um, I, from speaking from personal mm -hmm. viewpoints, a lot of the vintage crooners when I was a kid, couldn't stand it. It all had to be new, it all had to be what was coming out, what was gonna be the top pop stuff. And nowadays, I have spent so many years listening to the Nat King Coles, uh, to a number of the Bing Crosby, yep. um, a lot of the older stuff that's just the classics and it becomes a standard for a reason. I mean, Nat King Cole saying, uh, what was his big Christmas, Christmas song. Yeah, okay, so Nat King Cole saying that, and Natalie Cole, yeah. his daughter, wanted to feel close to him, so what she did was she picked the Christmas song. Yeah. And his Christmas song, and she sang his Christmas song with the the avatar of him, because he had passed. Yeah. But, see, it was just out of nostalgia. Yeah. Um, Henry Mancini. Yeah. Good. Another, yeah. We all know the name of Henry Mancini. Yeah. He did movies, scores, and stuff like that. Yeah. Um, so his Christmas music could bring back memories for people who grew up in California or yep. who were big movie places. Yep. Yep. We have so many different kinds, it's crazy. Yeah. Living Voices. Yeah. I don't even know what that There's is. Christmas Favorites is probably another compilation. That's it is. Yeah. 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 Little Drummer Boys on everything. Well, yeah. <laughs> certain, I mean, certain songs become the standard for a reason. 12 Days of Christmas. This is a great cover that could be used as decoration. Yeah. Especially in a nice mid-century mm -hmm. home. Yeah. Yep. You know, pipe organ. Oh, yeah. Just now, I'm showing you pipe organ because pipe organs, um, chimes, bells, uh, it was common yeah. back in the day for Christmas music. Yep. So you will come across a lot of that. Yep. And you'd be surprised that you'll remember it. You know, different Magnavox yeah. put out an album. So there's all sorts of companies that put out albums. And as you can see, we, another drummer boy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yep. um, and then what's this great songs of songs at Christmas. Oh, that's Henry Mancini. So yeah, I went yeah. through. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so um, there's that. Now, I am going to tell you about the number one, the number one, be um, the number one best-selling collectible, and it's not exactly the most expensive or the most bought. Right. It is the most collectible, and there's a reason for it. So here's a little tidbit that's going to, um, that's going to make you laugh in a way. Phil Spector. We all know who Phil Spector is, right? Yes. Give me hearts if you know who Phil Spector is. Come on now. All Who's that. listening? No hearts. Nobody loves us. Oh. Okay, Steve, what are you doing? You could give us hearts. <laughs> so, anyways, Phil Spector. Maybe it's Phil. Hearts will come. I know. Well, he's dead, isn't he? Yeah. Well, yeah. So, Phil Spector put out a Christmas guy. album called A Christmas Gift for You. Oh, there's one. Oh, there see, you. somebody does. There you go. And um, so, Phil Spector put out a Christmas compilation in 1963. Called uh, a Christmas gift for you, and the cover is cool. Yeah. It's got three Christmas presents with um, African American and um, white people coming out of the box. And um, but what makes it so collectible is the fact that, for several reasons, one, Brian Wilson from the the Beach Boys, Brian Wilson from the Beach Boys, auditioned with Phil Spector to play the piano on um, Santa Claus is Coming to Down. And Phil Spector looked at him and said, you are not good enough, and kicked him out. <laughs> Brian Wilson. Brian Wilson, he can't play piano. Like he that. cannot play piano. Phil Spector told him, you cannot play the piano. You don't know how. Poor playing. Get out. So um, that's one reason. Yeah. Number two is the fact that Sonny and Cher, who worked with Phil Spector, 
and was there during the day of filming, or during the day of recording for the Christmas album. And Darlene Love, who is a backup singer, then, um, was supposed to do backup on the album. Well, she never showed up for work. So Phil Spector went to Cher and asked Cher if she would sing backup on the entire album. And she said, of course. Probably because Phil Spector told her she wouldn't have a job if she didn't. And um, so she sang backup on that entire album, which is a lot of people don't know. Yeah. That correlates into the fact that Darlene Love was also supposed to be there for, um, for, the, next recording session. for the next recording session as a backup, which was with... Say the Righteous Brothers? Thank you, the Righteous Brothers. And um, she didn't show up for the first three songs, and the first song recorded was the famous You've Lost That Loving Feeling, and if you get the original recording, it's Cher in the background. Well, Isn't mind. that hilarious? Well, my mind. Plus, one of the other things about the album, the, the, the Phil Spector's A Christmas Gift for You, is he had arranged the release to coincide with President Kennedy's um, to visit to Dallas, and they released it that morning, and he was shot and killed that afternoon. Yeah. So there's a bunch of amalgamation of things that, that caused this to be one of the most collectible albums. Not to mention that Phil Spector's, you know, didn't he... What, he, he, he murdered back? somebody. He murdered somebody. Yeah, he <laughs> murdered somebody. So, um, complicated guy. That's one of the reasons for that. But I was stunned about Cher. Yeah, that's that's one of those things that you just don't think. And the fact that she's Why on, you? you're gonna lose that love and feeling. So, yep. you know, you never know who you're gonna hear on a Christmas album. people owe her some money, I think. Apparently. <laughs> well, back then, Phil Spector owned the rights to that. I'm sure. But um, so you never know what you're gonna get on a Christmas album. Yep. And a Christmas album is much more than just music. Yeah. yeah. It is nostalgia. Yeah. It is getting to understand your parents and what they like. Yep. Yeah. Building your own memories, going Building, to someplace, uh, yep. the music that you may never have. Absolutely. Um, they're good um, they're good to help decorate for Christmas. They're they've got songs on them that um, are just fantastic. Yeah. Now I'm gonna put this back on because some of you at the end didn't see, so I made this, by the way. But, um, so this crazy person is going to be signing off, along with Jason. Thank you so much for being a part oh, of this. You're very welcome. Thank you. I'm so coming. excited that he was able to join us. And we missed you, uh, Jasmine. We will see you next week. I don't know what we're going to be doing yet. Oh, I'm falling apart. It's glue for you. But, um, the, come in, see the albums. Yeah. Walk down the stall, memory lane with your parents, with your grandparents, with anybody. Um, because this all is going to outlive us. And it's the next generation and the next that are going to walk in with theirs and talk about times when they had fun and they remember it. So anyways, follow us. Thank you for the hearts. We love you. And um, I will see you guys next week. Jump over to, um, to uh, YouTube, Time Warp Vintage. Give us a subscribe. Be awesome. Um, come see us. And we're running a good sale and all the, re all the records including the 45s, yeah. are 30% off all the time. Awesome. You guys have a great day, and I will see you next week. Thank you, Jason. Thank you. Bye, you guys.